The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. This is the homily for the 30th Sunday in the Ordinary Time. The theme that I've chosen uh, for the Sunday is, He is calling you. The Gospel of today narrates how Jesus restored the eyesight to a blind man, Bartimaeus, by name. Blindness was rather common in Palestine. According to the prophets, restoring the eyesight to the blind would be one of the signs of the arrival of the Messiah. The Gospel speaks of five occasions in which Jesus cured blind people. Number one, two blind people whom Jesus cured soon after he brought back to life uh, Jairus' daughter. This cure is narrated only by Matthew, Matthew chapter 9, verse 27 to 31. Another blind man who was also dumb, this cure to reported only by Matthew chapter 12 verse 22. Now three, a blind man at Bethsaida, this miracle narrated only by Mark, Mark chapter 8 verse 22 to 26. The fourth one, today's gospel reading, Bartimaeus of Jericho, whose cure is narrated by Matthew, Mark and Luke. But according to Matthew, he had a companion with him and both were healed. We don't see the other companion in the Gospel of Mark, but you see in Matthew there are two people who were healed by Jesus. And finally, a man born blind living in Jerusalem, and to whose cure John dedicates the whole of chapter 9 in his Gospel. We read this chapter during the Lenten season in preparation for the uh, baptism that the catechumens will receive. Obviously, there must have been other cases. For example, Luke says that Jesus had just given sight to many when a delegation from John the Baptist came to meet him. Luke chapter 7 verse 21. So Jesus healed quite a lot of blind people. It was not just one or two or three or four, quite a lot. Early Christians attached particular importance to the cure of Bartimaeus and to that of the man born blind narrated by Gospel of John chapter 9, their healing became a favorite theme of preaching in the early church. There is a lot to talk about um, in this Gospel reading, but let us uh, try to focus only on Bartimaeus before healing what happened to him, after healing what happened to him. Okay? On hearing, verse 47, we read, uh, on hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. Why these words are very, very important. Bartimaeus, a blind man, uh, he was calling Jesus with this title, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. For that, uh, to understand this title, we need to go to the first reading today. I think that is why the church has given this first reading today. At the very center of the book of Jeremiah stands what scholars have referred to as the book of comfort. The book of comfort uh, were like just four chapters from 30 to 33, which is in the center of the book of Jeremiah. Because in the midst of so many oracles of judgment, these chapters contain oracles of the restoration of Israel and the inauguration of of a new covenant associated with a new exodus and then the return of the Davidic king who in later Jewish writings would be referred to as the Messiah. The blind man Bartimaeus identifies Jesus as a prophesied return of the Davidic king and calls him Jesus son of David have pity on me. Here the confession of Bartimaeus is ironic because this blind man sees Jesus' messianic identity more clearly than most people in the Mark's gospel. Now Jesus asked this wonderful question to Bartimaeus. What do you want me to do for you? We feel like telling Jesus, what, what a question Lord. What can a blind man desire but to see again? You know what the real meaning, I think the reason why Jesus asked this question is to tell us all that God respects free will. That's why prayer is very necessary to let God help us. So when you pray, 
you ask God or you let God to help you. God cannot help you unless and until you ask Him to help you. Prayer is man's positive response to God by the gift of free will. And then Bartimaeus says, Rabuni, let me see again. Those words of Bartimaeus is a fantastic statement because it's a prayer. It is also an act of faith. It is also an act of trust. So all three in one. Now, Bartimaeus after the healing. Mark concludes his narrative by telling us that on recovering his eyesight, Bartimaeus followed Jesus on the way. Verse 52. Jesus told him, go your way. Your faith has saved you. Immediately, he received his sight and followed him on the way. When some time back, Jesus had cured another blind man at Bethsaida, Jesus quietly sent him home. Mark chapter 8, verse 26. Bartimaeus obtained from Jesus a double favor. He recovered his bodily eyesight. Number two, he obtained spiritual eyesight. That is faith in Jesus and the privilege of following him, that is of becoming his disciple. He is now on the way. New Exodus. So, what is the lesson from Bartimaeus? Persons without faith are unable to discover Jesus passing by time and again in the events of their daily life. They are unable to see God's plan of love for them. For a person to accept Jesus' invitation, two things are essential. Number one, one must recognize his blindness, his misery, his sinfulness, his own powerlessness, and plead with Jesus to come to his rescue. Number two, one must become convinced that only Jesus can save us. As long as a person keeps on trusting in the few coins in his plate or on the walking stick by his side, he will not walk toward Jesus and will remain both blind and beggar. God always sends someone to lead us to Jesus. A people came and told the blind man that Jesus was calling him. So they called the blind man saying to him, Take courage, get up, he is calling you. We all need persons or events, joys, or trials to lead us to Christ. We must allow ourselves to be led. It might be a priest, it might be a member in the family, or a friend, or perhaps a person we never met before. But that is Jesus' method to lead people to himself through someone else. Early Christians had good reasons to reflect time and again on the good luck of Bartimaeus. If, as Matthew says, there were two blind men, and not just one, the reason why the name of the second one was omitted was perhaps that each one of us might take his place. Amen.